Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the OC Varsity Gridiron Show Championship Edition. I'm Dan Albano, Orange County Register, OC Varsity, and joined here by Steve Fryer, who's coming off a sizzling pick, maybe the pick of the year, Steve. You picked the Servite Friars to shock the host Braves, get revenge from that Week 10 clash, and you were correct. And we have an epic game now set up, Servite versus Modern Day for the D1 title on Friday night at Veterans Stadium. Congrats on that great pick, Steve. I got to credit uh, Chad Johnson of Mission Viejo. Oh. I'll, t- yeah, I'll tell you how. I was at, I was at, uh, I was at uh, Mission Viejo San Clemente, and that was the same night that Servite was playing um, St. John Bosco at St. John Bosco in, in league. Yes. And, and so C- Chad Johnson, Mission Viejo head football coach, comes up to me and goes, who's going to win that game? I said, I take Servite. goes, he goes, Bosco's going to win. I'll tell you why. I go, okay. He goes, they just got done playing modern day and that game, that modern day game, modern day survey game was on a Saturday. Okay. That one day is going to make a huge difference. And then, but maybe next time it won't make a huge difference. So I kept that in mind, you know? And I, so I, I thought, I think Chad's right. And I thought that, that survey would, would ha- that, that one week after playing uh, modern day and uh, Bosco back to back, if any team needed that one week before the division one playoff started, it was survey. And I thought they would come out of it fresh. And I like the way they finished strong against Santa Margarita. Yeah, right. I, I think I said last week, yeah, you're looking at horses, yes, you know, at the track, strong finishers. I like the way they came out. I didn't think they were going to run it 100 zillion times and only throw it 10, but you or know, eight, they had a great game times? plan. Was it yeah, I times? think Boston was going, when are they going to start throwing the ball, guys? No, they're not going to throw the ball. No, okay. Yeah. So it was Houston Thomas and Noah Fafita. Yes. And, and then Mason Graham going crazy on defense. Something. Yes. Well, it was an outstanding win. But we have to turn the page forward and look at these championship um, matchups. Uh, so let's start on Friday. Let's start in Division Nine. St. Margaret's nine and four playing at Colony six and six. So this one's a very interesting game because you got the St. Margaret's pass attack. Um, yep. You know. Um, you know, good receiving uh, and uh, quarterback receiver matchup taking on a team in Colony that has a really good pass rush. And I checked in with uh, Dan Davidson at Western, who played Colony earlier in the playoffs, and said that Colony can really have some good rush uh, edge edge rushers that could put some pressure on St. Margaret's. So it's how the Tartans respond um, to that pass rush. And then another, you know, kind of interesting thing lurking a little bit is, you know, there's been some, you know, St. Margaret's had a little controversy coming out of their, their, their Claremont uh, victory where Claremont wasn't happy with some of the, you know, they said alleged dangerous play by St. Margaret's player. And uh, I wrote about, if you want to read more about it on OC varsity, but one thing is interesting about that is that colony is from the same league as, Claremont. So there is uh, there's that <laughs> there is that element um, as you, you'd look a little bit uh, deeper. Mm-hmm. And um, Colony is uh, has also played a you know a very good schedule. Um, yes. and, but so has uh, St. Margaret's. I mean, credit St. Margaret's as a freelance team. They've kind of done it the hard way. You know, St. Margaret's has gone up to Santa Maria. They've gone to San Diego. They've gone to Inland Empire. They played St. Paul. Colony's played a good schedule. This is a very hard uh, game for me to pick, um, but I, I'm interested to see what you think on this game, Fryer. I think uh, Colony's got a bunch of team speed on defense. Uh, that's my understanding of their strengths as well. And that that also speaks to the edge rush action they're going to have and how disruptive they can be. If they can, you know, if they can put pressure on them, guys can't get up for St. Margaret's. So they're a really excellent passing attack. Uh, and I, I'm, I think Colony's going to win this game. So I'm going with the, the Colony guys. All right. I'm going to be going with, um, man, this was a harder game for me. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> but, um, and like you, totally impressed by St. Margaret's. Totally. Yeah. A freelance schedule, they put that thing together and, they, and they're in the finals. That's, uh, that's something. Let me tell you. People who don't understand that, let me tell you, that is, a, that is an achievement. Yeah. I think, um, you know, Jack Ruff's done a great job throwing a lot, uh, a lot of TDs. Um, you know, the, it is interesting about the player uh, that kind of has been on the spotlight with those, that a uh, dangerous play because, um, you know, he is, uh, you know, allegedly that's one of their top players at St. Margaret's. And I, you know, if you take him out of the final, 
which uh, has been brought up by Claremont. They they would like him not to play in the final. Um, that could be an impact on this game. I'm guessing that that's not going to happen, that the, that the kid will be able to play um, is my guess. Um, but we'll see if as this story develops more. But um, I think he's going to play, and I think St. Margaret's is going to going to win. So I'm okay. going with the, going the Tartans and, and Coach Miner. They are juggling a few things though this week. So we disagree on on D nine. That's a very hard game to pick. I think it was a one point projection win by a, a Colony on um, Cal Preps. So also on Friday, how about this one? Division eleven, Long Beach Jordan eight and five from the Moore League, which has got three teams in the finals. Um, Versus Northwood, and this game is at Irvine. Uh, Northwood is also eight and five. Friar, this is a really interesting matchup too because you got Northwood led by their first year coach, but veteran coach J.C. Clark. He's a Long Beach guy, really. Before he was be before he established himself in Irvine Unified with the Vaqueros and Northwood, he was the head coach at um, at Long Beach Wilson and Long Beach Milliken. He knows about Long Beach teams. And I did check it with coach JC Clark. And he said that uh, he's going to tell his kids that Jordan is tough and Long Beach kids are tough. So he's going to give them the right message. And that's what you need to do. Championship week. You can't take anybody lightly this time of year in these championship games, but it looks like a matchup of uh, Jordan running back, Damian Hernandez versus Northwood uh, running back, Adam Harper, who I know you're high on. Who do you pick in this one? Division 11 Friday night at Irvine high school. Uh, I'm going to go with Northwood. Uh, I think JC's a, a dynamite a defensive brain. Uh, yes, Adam Harper's a two-way guy, also plays safety, and, and he just is a tough-as-nails kid. They give it to him 20, 30 times. He's going to get his yards. I think the Northwood line's going to do okay there. Uh, I, think, I think it's a well-conditioned team, the Northwood guys. They finish strong. Uh, I'm a little worried about Jordan's speed. Have they, has, sure. has Northwood seen a team – that can that can run around the football field like that, but I think I think Northwood and with Clark and and you know figuring things out, I think that Northwood's going to win. Yeah, I think uh, I'm also picking Northwood. I didn't think that they were going to win out in Vista uh, Del Lago at Marino Valley on Friday, but they came home with a W, and mm-hmm. I think this sets up pretty well from playing at uh, Irvine. But yes, I think Jordan's team speed um, is something that's going to be a uh, definitely a factor. You know. Yeah. Um, been a good, interesting year for the uh, for the Moore League teams. They also have Compton in the finals as well. All right, now switching to Division 14. Talking about team speed here, you got Rialto, seven and six, um, taking on Luera, se- uh, seven and six, the number two seed in Division 14. This game's Friday at Glover Stadium. So I did a little research on Rialto, checked in with um, Artesia, who faced Rialto earlier in the playoffs. Look yeah. at you doing all this homework, man. I'm just taking guesses. I am doing it for the the, the viewers, and oh, man. Uh, and make them feel I, lazy because I am a crazy football uh, fanatic, <laughs> and <clears throat> I'm excited about these finals, Friar. So Rialto, yeah. they have mm-hmm. apparently a speed burner, and you know it's definitely a star player. Is number eleven Antoine Fowler, um, who is a junior, flies around. So Artesia says, hey. Luera, you've got to be ready for the team speed, which you just mentioned is difficult if you haven't seen it. Um, how do you replicate that in practice, right, Friar? Yep. Luera, um, number two seed out of the Garden Grove League. Um, Lance Neal doing a good job in his you know, first year, just like J.C. Clark. Um, Cesar Vasquez is a two-way star for the Saxons. Um, good kid. Who do you like in this one, Friar? Uh, I think all the things – Rialto's – of all the teams that uh, uh, um, Laura has played so far, Rialto is probably most like Rancho Alamitos. Rancho Alamitos beat them 37 to nine. I don't, I don't think it's going to be that one sided, but I think, and Laura is not a heck of a role. Those kids believe in themselves and it's fantastic. But, but I, I, you know, just a sensible pick is Rialto. You know, it was so cool. Laura did it. Oh, I tell you third place team out of that league. You know, they had to, they had to beat that, uh, you know, La Quinta in the final day of the season to get in the playoffs. And they did 21-10. But, uh, but um, you know, logically, I think Rialto is the pick here, sir. All right. This one was another, you know, a couple other storylines of this game that made me wonder about the pick. 
So I don't believe Rialto played during the spring. Didn't see any 2000, uh, well, it's still, you know, 2021 spring didn't play. And then they're formerly um, part of the old San Andreas league, which was, you know, in 2019, they played some pretty good teams out there um, in the past going back to 2019, but I'm picking Loera. I think, I think uh, it sounds like Rialto could be a little one dimensional. I'm not sure. Um, you know, they didn't play in the spring season. Loera is playing well. Um, and I don't think, uh, I, I think they, uh, I think, L- and Loera played a pretty good schedule. I think, you know, Garden Grove League with, with, Ran- for this division, for Division 14, the highest yeah. division in the Southern section, playing L- uh, Rancho Santiago. I, I think uh, Luero, again, this is a very close game on the Cal Preps uh, ranking. I think Rialto's that Garden favorite. Grove League, Yeah, that Garden Grove League was up this year. I saw Santiago play, and I thought, wow, that's it. that's the best Santiago team I've seen in a while. Very yeah. physical. Luero's played physical football teams. You know, even, you know they, they lost to Northwood, which, you know, of course, is in the finals, stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So the big one on Friday, and maybe the game of the year, you got Servite, as we just mentioned, uh, in the finals. Who they play? Uh, Against modern day, their arch rival. So these guys, I know. And, and tickets go on sale four o'clock today. Um, so you got to, it's going to be a hot ticket at Veterans Stadium on Friday night. So this rivalry, so special. Um, longest continuous rivalry in Orange County football. Played every year since 1961, but they've never played in the finals prior. Um, I feel like this one, you know, psychologically sets up pretty well. I think sets up better for Servite. I feel like they got a big monkey off their back by beating Bosco. They fulfilled a lot of their promise, probably some of the pressure of this storied senior class. They broke through. Now they get another shot at, at, at uh, modern day who they lost to earlier in the season. And it seems like um, Servite is playing physical now and uh, they they control the line of scrimmage with their um, their ground game running. You know between Noah and Houston, Noah Fafita and Houston Thomas. Between those two guys, they ran for like 260 yards. Yeah, I was surprised how you know that Servite's got those two way players going both ways against Bosco that doesn't have as many two way players. Servite controlled the line of scrimmage ground game. That could be different. I saw modern day struggle on some special teams. Uh, last week against Centennial on the road. That is a definitely red flag when you're playing Servite that likes to block punts, has good kickoff coverage. Um, you got to be very concerned about punt coverage and snapping when you're playing Servite. They're going to come after blocks. And I saw last week, modern day sale punt for a safety. They're going to, so there's some, and then um, Sir, uh, modern day's offense struggle with the passing game against a really good Centennial team. Maybe you give more credit to Centennial. But then you look at, you know, flip this thing psychologically for, for, for modern day. They're ranked number one in the country. They're undefeated, playing for a national title. And Servite is the team that modern day gets up for the most because that's Coach Rawlinson is a modern day product. And all the guys always say, we, we play Servite for Rawlinson. We know how much this game means to him. They've traditionally dominated this, uh, this rivalry. Um, Servite has not beaten mod, uh, Servite has not beaten Modern Day since 2011, back in the first regime of uh, Coach Thomas. But um, this is going to be a heck of a game. You got arguably the two best defensive players in Orange County by by head and shoulders in this game, in Mason Graham and David Bailey. Those are the two best defensive guys in the county. Um, you wonder, you know, some of these adjustments that Servite's making with Houston Thomas at safety. It's going to be a um, it's going to be a heck of a game. Uh, for who you picking in this this division one? You you are right on Servite last week. Who are you getting this week? Uh, modern day. Uh, I think a lot, lot of the struggles they had last week. You got to give credit to uh, Centennial coach Matt Logan and company. Okay, really good football team. Uh, you know things like bad snaps and things like that are just mistakes. I don't I don't see modern day continue to make those sorts of mistakes. And they certainly can survive them. They can survive, you know, 120 yards and penalties and still win. I just think that modern day is just too – there seems to be very few flaws in that thing. 
don't have guys going both ways, you know, that's going to pay out too, perhaps here as well. Um, and I, and I, I think that modern day is just such a complete football team and survey can do it. Heck yeah. You know, uh, Bosco made a boatload of mistakes last week and that helped survey quite a right. quite, quite a bit. I don't see modern day making that same number of mistakes. So I think, uh, I think the monarchs of modern day are going to win it. All right. Yeah. It's going to definitely, I think my uh, partner on the uh, Trinity football podcast, Scott Ross, he, he's, I think came down to the conclusion, almost like, just like you, it's going to come down to who executes better. And, you know, I think, uh, like you said, Bosco made some um, early mistakes in that game. They were down before they knew it 14, nothing right. To, uh, yes, sir. to, uh, to serve. Yeah, serve at a couple short fields, short fields, serve. I capitalized. Um, yeah. I think another big X factor in this game is going to be Relique Brown. Um, he ran well against Servite in the first game, modern day. No one's really run on modern day's defense. So that's going to be interesting. Once again, just like the first game, um, no one's run against modern day's defense all year. And this is, you know, a, a, what game or what um, Servite team is going to show up? Is it going to be the air attack with, are they going to throw it to Tetero McMillan 15 to 20 times like they did in the first game? Or are they going to uh, ground it out? Um, we haven't had a big game uh, from Tetero in, in a little bit. Um, this could be a fascinating game because um, Servite is making some adjustments. I am going to pick the Friars. I'm going to jump on the Friars bandwagon after not picking them last week. And I'm, I'm playing the psychology card, thinking that they got a big burden off their shoulders. They can take a deep breath, can play more free. And um, somehow, some way, they're going to find a way to win this game. They're going to have to play um, really well. But I think, um, but, you know, uh, but you also have to guard against this though, right? Is that is modern day as coach Rollinson subtly made this comment to me yesterday. We, he said, the Monarchs, we're not playing just to get to the final. We are playing to win. That's our goal all year has been to win the game. So Servite has to guard against, Oh, we made it. Got past boss. We're in the finals. Hey, I wonder what I, but I think that Servite's had that uh, mentality, the special senior class. I think they've had envisions of winning it all and they got their unfinished business. They've never beaten, you know, Noah, Tetaroa, that group. They've never beaten modern day. They got, they've beaten Bosco and I think they're going to get it. Uh, but I'll give you another chance here to re respond to that uh, Friar. Nah, I, I, I think that's all good stuff. And, and visiting with the, uh, the Servite guys yesterday uh, at the uh, CF Southern Section Championship uh, press luncheon. Those guys were pretty calm, confident, calm. You know, they weren't like, oh, man, we made it to this room. They're going, yeah, you know, we figured we're going to be in this room and two tables over, we're going to see our modern day buds. So I think that um, <clears throat> the Servite guys are ready to rock. I think they'll do really well. Mason Graham, <laughs> got to, modern day's got to block that guy. You know, he's something special. He was great last week. And, uh, you know, he, 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 he or David Bailey, defensive player of the year, right? I guess. Yeah. Somebody else out there. I don't know. No. But those two guys are the leading candidates in my brain. I feel uh, like. And, and, and Fafita yeah. was tough as nails last week. Uh, but, and, but, you know, you mentioned a guy, Relique Brown. That guy, you know, if, if they open up holes for that guy, it's going to be a lot of, you know, 12 yard gains, nine yard gains. And then yeah. Elijah Brown gets the protection and throws it to his boys, you know, CJ and Williams, et cetera. A guy that, that needs to, that, and I've been saying this for a few weeks, you know, writing about it some or telling folks, survey's got to get the ball to Ken Burnett. And they targeted him twice last week by my memory against Bosco. That guy is a weapon. And I don't think he's, he doesn't, he's averaging not even two catches a game, I think. Uh, not even not maybe two, but not three. That guy is something. Number eighty-eight. When you watch this game, folks, number eighty-eight, great athlete, gets open. He blocks his blocks his tail off. He's fantastic. Yeah. You know, that's that's very, a team player there. He's yeah. not getting a lot of targets, but he's still blocking for his mates. That's a high quality young man. Uh, he's. I think getting him involved in the offensive game plan is an essential thing for Servite. But they didn't do it last week. They still beat a great football team. So maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of people going there. Of course you don't. Right? <laughs> well, it's going to be a great game. Looking forward to it on Friday night uh, for sure. And what a are special you going? I will. I am going to be there. I'll see you there. 
Um, Can I sit next to you? Of course. There's plenty of space in the uh, in veterans. I know, veterans. Veterans, yeah. Yeah, and it's only, what is it? Is it the, the press box elevation is 2,000 feet above sea level? <laughs> oh, man, it's it's nice. It's it's nice up there. I like it. You can Oh, oh, uh, and uh, instead of tacos, you have to carry my backpack. Okay. Out there. Yeah. There's definitely <laughs> All right, enough no, about this. We got other games. I know. Rock and roll. All right. Rock so, and roll, Danny. Rock and roll. Let's go. Saturday, we got uh, two games. Yep. You're going to be at this one, I believe. Newport Harbor, out of the tough Sunset League. Yep. With their, uh, I think they're six and seven, but showing that right. they deserve to be in this division, playing up to their division, their uh, third seed, and they're they're such a tough non-league schedule, tough league schedule, showing that they belong. But this one looks scary at Temecula Valley on the road. Yes, Temecula Valley, ten and three. So here's what I th- when I stick at Temecula Valley. What league are they from? They're from the Southwestern League. That league, I think, is pretty darn scary. You're Marietta in. Valley, all those dudes. Yeah. Yeah. So you got Marietta Valley and, and Vista Marietta Valley. Great Oak. Who, yeah. Um, Great Oak isn't as strong like they used to be. Um, they also have Chaparral, who's pretty good. Yes. Both these teams, a um, couple of those teams we mentioned, uh, you know, Vista Marietta, Chaparral got a couple playoff wins. And um, so this is a, a tough team. And then to make the Valley, they're in the finals for the second straight playoffs because uh-huh. uh, in 2019, they won CIF. They came to Orange County and beat Cypress, who was undefeated. Um, this looks like a tough assignment for the Sailors. Who do you got in this Division Six tilt? Uh, Temecula Valley, a ton of athletes and big dudes all over the place. Uh, Coach Esposito, Bert Esposito, used to coach at Southern California Christian in the 90s. School's not even around, but uh, okay. uh, veteran coach and uh, Lofthouse has done a great job at, uh, at Newport and had to make some changes here and there. Um, but I think uh, Temecula Valley is a better football team. They're going to win. Yeah. They, Newport's uh, changed up the uh, quarterback situation, going with um, AJ Moore, who's been doing a nice job. Um, uh-huh. They have got two really good playmakers. I like on the outside edge at receiver. Um uh, Josiah L- Lamarque and uh, Cashton. And Cashton. Yeah. Well, you're going to see some, uh, both those guys, uh, I think it's a junior and a sophomore combination. Um, yeah. They got some multiple running backs um, with a little bit of variation. They got a good offensive line. So I look at it like Newport's going to have to play, definitely have to play their best game. And they're going to, and they're going to have to kind of replicate it kind of, this could almost be like, is this a Tribuco Hills type level game, a Capo Valley that they're going to have to play as well that they could have won those games early in the year that they lost. That's what the, that's the kind of performance they're going to have to put in against a, a really good uh, Temecula Valley team. I'm also picking Temecula Valley, but I think Newport's going to play really well. That's going to be another really tight game because I think Newport is battle tested. There's great vibes out of the Newport uh, athletic community right now. We've you know been talking about water polo, winning the open division, girls volleyball, making a run. I mean, there's something in the water in Newport Harbor, um, Newport Beach area. And it ain't oil, finally. <laughs> Let's, no, this is, we're talking about CIF championship type uh, caliber. Um, Are you play. talking about pools in that water? I don't know. Are you talking about the, off the coast there where we had that bad oil spill? Newport Athletics, uh, they're just hot, sizzling. They're feeding off each other. It's awesome. Love that. And um, making their mark in the uh, Sunset League and SoCal playoffs. Yeah, Colonel Del Mar ain't bad either. Just, just exactly. sticking up for the sea, sea Kings yes. here. Sea Kings beat Newport um, handily. Yeah, and Stick, uh, sticking up for Coach O'Shea and guys. Yes, and um, and 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 CDM had a great run too. So um, yep. they just don't. CDM didn't have the the water polo or the girls volleyball team to match up. We're talking athletic programs here, uh, right? I got now. you, bud. And um, all right, now finally. Division two on Saturday night. I'm going to be at this game <laughs> in the Valley. So Orange Lutheran, fifth place team from the Trinity League. Taking on Alamany, eight and three, the number one seed in, uh, no, are they were they numbered? They were numbered the two seed, I think, um, in this. Uh, top seeded. Top seeded. Okay, yeah. Uh, yep. Sierra Canyon, who Orange Lutheran beat in the semifinals, was the, num- was the uh, number two seed. So right. the number one seed, Alamany at home, eight and three. Very interesting for me here is let's talk about Orange Lutheran. 
So, like I said, fifth place team in the Trinity League. So, outside the Trinity League, Orange Lutheran's record is a spotless, undefeated 8-0. and How about that? Um, now they're playing outside the Trinity League again, taking on Alamany, who's got a great uh, run game, Floyd uh, Chalk. Um, they got another second, uh, Jalen uh, Thompson, another running back duo. They are very physical. Uh, Coach Rod Sherman said that Alamini is getting running the ball more effectively as the season goes on. I checked in with Missionville coach Chad Johnson, who's Diablo smoked Alamini early in the year, and a, and a surprising score to me jumped off the page. He said Alamini has the best pass attack, one of the best pass attacks, the pass rushes that Orange Lutheran will see. But I think Orange Lutheran's offense, I think, is is going to be fine in this game. I think they're going to score big points because they got a veteran offensive line. They have lots of receivers and they get the ball out quick. They dump it out to Desmond Jackson. They they'll, they use the pass rush of other teams against them and and they dump it. They get it out quick. They Logan has been very well coached up on, on getting those screen passes out by uh, yeah. Aaron Corp. And I think uh, – you know, uh, but Orange Lutheran's got to watch and, and uh, you know, uh, Alamini going these long drives and keeping the ball away from that offense. But I think some way, somehow, Orange Lutheran is going to shock um, the SoCal football uh, landscape on Saturday. They're going to beat the number one seed on the road, Alamini, get their first title in since 2006. And uh, that's going to be a big upset. That's my pick. What do you got, Friar? Uh you mentioned Logan. Logan Gonzalez, the quarterback at Orange Lutheran. He's been better every game in these playoffs. Every game. I mean, that's pretty cool to see. I think that uh, Alameda is going to be able to run the ball, control that, make sure that the Orange Lutheran offense doesn't get on on the field much. More plays, more time of possession for Alameda. At the luncheon Monday, all five guys that uh, that uh, Coach Clausen brought were all linemen. Offensive yes. linemen, like, yes, these are our boys, you know? Yes. That's, going, that's pretty good. So I think that's where their bread and butter is, those big old line guys. I think that Alamany, uh controls uh, time for possession, runs the football, keeps moving the chains, and I think they get a win. Okay. Orange Lutheran, like I said about Servite, Orange Lutheran completely capable of, of winning this game. You know, if Logan gets the quick strike thing going with his guys, you know, Desmond and all those cat, cats, Orange Lutheran can win this game. But I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go with Alamay. That makes more sense to me. Okay, I think about and I and I saw those linemen stand up at the front of the room. They were very close to Alamini. Yeah, I know they covered Orange, up the whole wall. Yes, and I know Orange Lutheran saw that, but they also have seen uh, Mason Graham in the Trinity League. That guy's a monster. Yeah. They saw the he Bosco is. defensive line, which is deep and fast and huge, and they've seen daily David Bailey. And the rotation of defensive linemen from from modern day. I mean, I I just I think those guys looked impressive, but mm -hmm. I don't think uh, it's going to uh, spook Orange Lutheran when they've played against and they played them in three consecutive weeks and they played yeah you know they they played Servite they played uh, Bosco and modern day three in a row and yeah. they uh, and they you know they, I think they'll be okay um, but it's going to be a very tough game and. And Olu's going to have to play their best game as well. And sure. they're going to they're gonna have to shore up a couple things that, um, you know, that they, <clears throat> they struggled against. But again, giving a good credit to Sierra Canyon. Um, all these games, I mean, like I said at the beginning of this playoffs, Friar, anybody who can win a CIF Southern section title in this new power ranking system, you need some extra congratulations. I, I feel like this year is, I think, I think this year more, you know, more than the past. For some reason, I just feel like, you know, the playoffs have been so much tougher. We got seven OC teams in the playoffs, uh, in the finals. Yeah. Um, we can win as many. Orange County can bring home as many as six uh, titles. We're going to bring at least one home because we got the all division one, all county division one matchup. But uh, man, it's going to be some tight games, I think. And so far, the county has been up to the challenge. It's going to be interesting how many titles OC brings home on this weekend, Friar. Yeah. I agree. It's a great opportunity for all these kids, you know, win or lose, you got to the finals. There's a, but you're, you're playing in late November, you're practicing on Thanksgiving. When you do all those things, you had a great year. So congratulations to everybody for getting here. 
uh, fantastic uh, efforts by everybody from Loire in Division 14 to Servite Modern A Division 1 and everybody in between. Uh, great efforts by all you guys. You guys are going to create some lifelong memories. You're going to be looking back in these games when you're our age. And, uh, and you're going to remember, you know, you, had, you, you played in, you know, a great game late November. You practiced on Thanksgiving. It's a feast of fun, man. Go get it. Feast of fun. That's excellent. That is a good uh, pump-up I'm going to write that down. I like That's that. right. I think you're trying to go after LaDainian Thomason's uh, job right now as a uh, guest speaker at uh, the banquet. I should have introduced him. <laughs> Tom did an excellent job, but uh, yes, you would have a, uh, Tom Sims, of course, did a great job running that banquet. Of course. But I would have cried introducing LT. I would have hugged him and all kinds of stuff. You did give him the standing ovation. I did. I was the only who stood up for the guy. Did you get his autograph afterwards? I went, no, I don't do autographs, but I did, I did get my picture taken with him in the hallway. Oh, wow. Is, nope. that, is that on your I went uh, up and I introduced, I went up and I said, I said, hey, LT, Rogers Beckett. He looks at me like, what? Rogers Beckett is the guy who played, he was a defensive back for LT's first two years of the Chargers. <laughs> so he thought, what? I, I just messing with you. So he started laughing. So I, <laughs> he thought that was hilarious. Is this picture with the Hall of Fame running back on your Instagram? Uh, no, it should. It should be. I, I will look up there. I will. I would like to see that up there. I think I'll. Yeah, I'll, I should. I should. I'll, I have a. I'll I have, I have a horrible looking smile on my face for that thing. So, and I'm very vain. Well, that is. Uh, that's great. It's a. It's a memorable week. I like your enthusiasm. These are the special things that you're taking in. Everyone's taking in this week. So, um, thanks for everybody for listening to our video. Please like and subscribe this OC Varsity channel. And uh, we're not done with football yet, guys. So. Thanks for all the support this year. Uh, we got and the regionals and stuff coming up. Yes, regional state. We got some of these games. Uh, state will be in Orange County at Saddleback College. Beautiful right? Saddleback College. So, yeah. Got a couple more weeks here to go, but this is the big one. Southern oh, section. Oh. Finals. And the game's going to be at Veterans. Stop asking me, and I can't get you tickets. There's Four keeping Division One game at, at Veterans Stadium. It'll be fine. Tons of parking. You're going to pay for parking, five, ten dollars. I don't know, but they're not moving the game to the Coliseum with the Rose Bowl or Mount Sac or Saddleback <laughs> College or Angel Stadium or Dodger Stadium or SoFi with a Rose Bowl or at the beach or at Orange Coast College or at San Clemente High School or at yes. the, the new stadium in Vegas. This game staying at Veterans. <laughs> hey, you know what? It is COVID times. We got ourselves a great game. We got to enjoy it. So yep. thanks, everybody. And we'll see Rock you in the games.